All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, sorry about last week, but the internet was a little screwy, so I and I didn't have a video made. <laughs> so today we're going to be doing this uh, cute little heart-shaped roses. And uh, this is one of my own creations. And I will share with you how I got a, this creation. <laughs> and the way I did it was I tried out AI. It, to me, this is my own personal um, views on this. I love it for figuring out compositions, for getting ideas, um, combinations of things that you want in, in a drawing or painting or whatever, or a style, that type of thing, colors. It's endless what you can find um, or create, I should say. So this is what uh, this creation ended up like and I tweaked it here and there and then uh, made it up. So I thought it would be a good one to start off in using my pan pastels which I haven't used in a long long time. So uh, if you don't have any um, Oh, you got some pa pastels, pan pastels. Awesome, Devin. Um, this is on the membership if you're wanting the download. I've made a downloadable printable for you. So you can download that and play with it as much as you want. Use it on watercolor or acrylic or pencil crayon, whatever you want to use. Um, So have you got the full set, Devin? Uh, today I'm going to just do the pinks and, you know, um, a little bit going into your burgundies and maybe into peachy colors of the rose. And I think I'm going to uh, make the leaves that bluish teal into aqua color also. So we're going to... This is such a quick way. I do a lot of portraits this way because it saves a huge amount of time. And what I do is I put in a base layer. So like uh, I've told you before about acrylic painting, even uh, watercolor painting, you put in a base layer. No, I have two sets of 20 and then a few extras. Okay, so uh, you can always mix them also so we're going to use mostly pinks and uh, a little bit of peachy oranges and blues so if you have a red or a magenta color magenta would be perfect if you have a magenta and a white um what else yellow orange uh if you have red you could use the red instead of the magenta uh, purple, if you have it, would work too. Now we're just going to do a base layer. So I made this one a little bit softer. It's not as dark uh, as far as the line work. And I um, changed the settings uh, in uh, Photoshop Elements and just grayed it. Uh, I imagine you could do it in any other kind of... Um, photo or photoshop or um, any of the other uh, programs that are out there for changing photographs or making a painting uh, Devin I think you're on uh, one of the programs doing your digi work you'll probably find settings in there that you could probably use to change the dark lines to a little bit softer so you don't have to worry about um, covering them as much. Now, this could be a lot softer, but I kept it a little bit darker so you guys could see um, the lines better. 
So I printed it onto this. Uh, it's actually uh, a mixed media multimedia paper by Canson. Strathmore also has a mixed media, or you could also use a Bristol vellum for this. Um, don't use a Bristol smooth because it's, as it says, it's very smooth and you, it'll be harder to get uh, colored pencil layers on it or a lot of pastel. Awesome, Devin. So uh, you could also use, um, this is the 400 series of pastel paper. That would also work. The only thing, if you're going to be using colored pencils, you have to be aware of the grain on your paper. Sometimes it's very rough and you'll have a lot of problems with your colored pencil um, not laying down smooth enough. So I prefer the Bristol vellum or this mixed media. And you can also get, if you want a finished piece, um, Strathmore has a 500 series in mixed media is excellent for this. And it's very, very uh, thick. I think it's 380 pounds. So it's a finished piece. So um, actually, I think I'll get this picture so I can show you it, what I'm doing. So here's um, part of the picture. <laughs> I didn't get the whole thing. I had to draw the rest of it. But uh, I'm looking at the mid layer that I want to put in. So as you can see, there's a real uh, orangey tone in here. And down in here, we've got a lot of dark. So more into your magentas. Don't go dark, dark. Go to your mid-tone. So I'm looking at the mid-tones here, more into the magenta, but a little bit lighter. Uh, got some more in here because we can do our highlights and our shadows in colored pencil. Hey Clint, good to see you. So what I want to do right now is find my mid-tones. So I've got some magenta here. I have dark, dark ones too, but I'm going to stick to the lighter one. And this one is, uh, that's the magenta. And then I also have a pink. And this is a permanent red tint. You could use that. Or you could also use, uh, this one is magenta tint. This one's a little cooler. And this is warmer. So if you look at, there's less cool in this as far as mid-tones. There's more of this um, warmer shade of pink. So I, pr I might use a bit of that, maybe for the outer edges. We'll see. I tend to uh, go more into colored pencil when I do the highlights. Now, the low lights, I will be using colored pencil. It's a whole lot easier to do your real small areas than to um, try to get these brushes, even though they are good but they're still a little fin finicky for getting into really detailed uh, uh, line work edge type of thing. Uh, I do have a white here if I want to lighten some of this. Now I don't have a big, I did have one, but I think it's too dirty to use because this is a very pristine color. So I'd have to clean my sponges, but there is a bigger oval sponge that you can, um, mix your colors on and use it or you can mix it right on and this is another thing that I really like this is the colorless blender so when you're 
putting on your colors, you just put a little bit of this on your tool and it'll blend those colors together really smooth. And it's a great uh, little extra to have if you don't have it. And it's basically a, almost looks white, but it's a little off white from the, the white titanium. All right, let's see. I don't think I'll use those, but I'm gonna, I think this is gonna be, we'll test things out too. Get a piece of paper and test things out. So I have this little piece of paper here. I'm going to, let's see, just put this beside me here. Um, now the tools I use are the uh, soft tools and these are um, by Pam Pastel. Now I know they've been taken over by, um, is it Golden I think? Bought them out. So you'll be able to get all your new stuff there. Um, I like to use, basically these are my most used tools the shapes. And you can get these for replacements. So when this starts to, if you can see that, this one here, see there's a little piece starting to come up. All you have to do is flip it over and use the other side. Um, this is another one of theirs. I like this one because you can get a little more uh, detailed areas. Oh, awesome, Devin. You're all set then. <laughs> I love that tool, um, blender stuff. It, you'll see how easy uh, your stuff goes on with that. And it doesn't take much, so don't put too much on your brush or your tool. Okay. Um, let's see what else. I think that's it. So I'm going to put this down. Take these away. And I'll just use this or you can also get these if you're doing large areas and they come in different shapes. Now when you're using these, this one's dirty. I haven't cleaned these. All you have to do when you, you're you using them in a project, just wipe them off on a paper towel and they will eventually come clean. So you can use your, your next color. I haven't cleaned these from a past painting of a, a whatever I've done. I don't remember what the last one was I did. You should put them in soap and water and clean them good after a few uses just to make sure that they're, you know, if you're using white, you don't want to um, smudge your uh, painting. And then the other thing that you should have on hand is erasers. So what I like to use are these tough stuff, stick erasers, and also a, a kneadable eraser. And do I have one down here? Um, hmm. I don't think I have one down here. I might have to go get one. We'll see. I have one in the drawer here. All right, I'll have to go get one if I need it. It's just across the table. <laughs> All right. Uh, nice, Clint. Good luck with your sale. Oh, you're having a sale. Awesome, Clint. Good luck. Um, I 
Great, so let's get started. Let's test this. So I, um, you can print out, take a screenshot here, take a screenshot and uh, you can print that out. Or if you're on the members page, there is also a uh, picture of this on the uh, community page. Hi, Kathy. So we're going to start off by seeing what colors we can get here. So this is magenta. And don't rub your pastels. It gets too much up. You just have to pat. Just pat. And let's see what color we get. This is watercolor that I'm using to test. Actually, I'm just going to go on the edge and see what I think. It could be a little warmer. So I could add a little bit of Hmm. Okay, let's see. That's not bad. Okay, this is the other color I have, orange tint. Magenta. All right, so I'm looking at this here and let's test this pink. That's a nice light area pink. So if I put a little magenta with that, That's not bad. Want a little bit darker. It's not going to be exact, I don't think. I don't have a pink pink. This um, it's an odd shade. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with this light pink. So I see it right in here. Let's put this up a little bit for you. It's right in here. And I'm just going right over the lines. You do want to be able to see your lines. And a little bit in here. Bring this over here. On here. And if I go over the edge, I can erase that. And I'm, you don't see what I did here because I, I made this part up because the picture that I got didn't have the bottom part. I just made it up. So let's see. Right in here is light. In here. So I'm not worried about going over lines. This is a base coat. I'll show you what this is a little bit of that blender on my brush. Look how it smooths out. It takes any kind of blotchiness away. And just one 
pat on your brush, so not very much. I'm going to take some of the magenta. Most of the work's going to be done with um, my colored pencils. So I, what I'm doing here, I have the orange and the magenta, and I'm dipping my brush in both. If it's not exact, that's fine. This is just a reference photo. A little bit of the mech of the uh, blending. Uh, pen pastels are so pretty, and another YouTuber said they are basically the same thing as eyeshadow. What are your thoughts on? Uh, no, <laughs> they are not. They are totally different than any other thing. Um, these are so highly pigmented that um, there's no possible way you'd get this much color out of eyeshadow. They, they're smoother. No, shoot. My back. Are you guys back? You are fuzzy now. Oh, geez. Mm. Is it, how is it now? Okay, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Just never know. Don't know what happened there. This is why I like doing, um, what do you call them? Premieres instead. Then I don't have to worry about my uh, internet going in and out. I'm in a small, small town. So it's I don't have the city type internet. 
Okay, so now I'm going to put some on here. These are the rosebuds. And I'm not worried about going over the lines because I can erase that. Um, just wait a minute and I'll look at the chat. I just wanted to get this part in. And I'll answer any questions. A little bit of mixing. Medium. I think that's good. Okay. And then I'll just clean my, okay, uh, okay, that happens, Devin. How the heck do you set it? I would think it would smear big time. Let's see what we got here. I heard, okay, I already, I, yes, I heard if you use a lot of it, it can be difficult to lay down. Color pencil over top. Um, a lot of this um i don't i don't lay down a huge amount this is just base layer if if you're um doing a painting primarily just pan pastels and then you want to add colored pencil on top for more of the finer details then i would probably fix it and there is a pastel fixative that you can use. Uh, it will slightly discolor what you have. Uh, I don't find it that bad myself. Um, and it'll leave a little bit of a tooth to it. Or you could use your pencil form of pastels instead of your colored pencils. It's up to you. If it's just a uh, minute, bits of detail, I would probably go with uh, the pastels because it'll go over top. Um, what else? Anyone else have questions? Pan pastels. Okay, I answered that. Uh, hi, Kathy, stopping in for, hi, Sandra. I meant to say a lot of the binder. Oh, a lot of the binder? Um, I don't use a whole lot on my, I, one tap, that's it. That's all I got on my brush. You can see the little bit of white. That's all I'll use for a large area. You don't need a lot. So yeah, you probably might run into that. Uh, I haven't personally, but I don't use a lot of pastels to lose all the tooth. So if you're losing the tooth, you definitely should spray it with a fixative. Um, there's different fixatives out there, too, that you can use. Um, I've used the regular fixative that you would on uh, any other type of art. It doesn't have to be uh, a pan pastel. Um, 
but you do want a fixative that sprays very fine. Uh, there is a, what is it called? A milk-based fixative that's meant just for pastels. Let me see if I can find it. It's right behind me. Up oh, here it is. Um, I don't like the sprayer on it. And that's Superfix. It's meant for, uh, it's odor free. You can spray it inside. It's for pastels, pencil, charcoal, watercolor, and mixed media. Uh, if you're going to buy this, I would suggest getting a uh, one of these sprayers and use that. Put this in there. And, and these are very, very fine mist. And then you're not going to get blotches because this one tends to splurt out not a fine mist and i hate that because that will mark your your um paper um okay is that it all right so we got that started. Now I'm going to um, I don't think I'm going to well, I guess I could. Yeah, I may as well. Um, I'll stick to this colored copy so you guys know exactly what I'm doing. So it's more or less uh, aqua and a nice mm, Phthalo blue, I would say. Let's see what we got in my stash here. I think I got blues. Yeah. Just have to get them. Um, if you get pan pastels, these cases are great. I like them. What I do is I get a bigger case for storing, and then I get these smaller cases for when I'm doing a project. So uh, you can put in your colors, and then you can hold them for when you're doing a project. But these are great because then it stops them from rattling around and breaking, because they can break. Um, let's see. I would say that it's going to be in this area here. And this one. Okay, so let's get our where to put it? Test her out. Wipe it off. So let's test a color. Beautiful color. Perfect. Yeah, that's going to be great. Actually, got to wipe that off first so I get the true pastel color. Nope, that was. Wake up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so there's there's that one and that one. Okay, so I'm going to get my smaller one out this time just so that I can get in those little, tight little areas. So a lot of this here will be this brighter color. It just saves so much time in 
uh, color pencil because, well, you know that when you're doing color pencil, you're um, doing layers upon layers upon layers. And this probably cuts your layering in half, I would say. I think I'm going to put maybe this one in blue. You might put a little of two colors in. We'll see. This pastel is also a really great way of using um, for skin tones, for um, hair. Just want a base coat. I'm not too worried. Well, that was, uh, I think, here. A little bit of blender. This is a new sponge I have on my tool. Okay, that's basically it for the base coat. Hey, Dorothy. All right, so I'm going to put these up here. So I don't really need them right now. Okay, and... <laughs> that. Oh yeah, I'm going to go get a eraser. Okay, so these are kneaded erasers. Oh, awesome. There, well, they're easier than you think. So kneaded eraser. Well, that one marked. Must have had some black on my. But we will be doing a background on this, maybe in watercolor. Mixed media is what I do a lot of. Then you can just take a finer eraser and just go along the edges and erase. Like so. Now I'm not gonna worry. I'm gonna not gonna worry about it right now. I just wanted to show you. But after you're done, um, 
your pencil work, then you can just take your eraser, go around the edges and uh, clean the edge up a bit. Uh, do this before you put your fixative on, because if you put it, your fixative on, you can't do it. <laughs> Okay, let's see if that comes out. Oh. Probably will once. Oh, I just smudged it again. I got dirty hands. <laughs> okay. All right. What paper am I using? It is uh, Bristol vellum. Don't get Bristol smooth. You want a Bristol vellum. Or you can also use um, Canson or Strathmore mixed media. It works just fine for this also. So now what we want to do is start using uh, colored pencils. So I have a uh, assortment. It's, uh, I can't show you um, beside me. Well, I'll take it over here. There. <laughs> it's on a on a, a um, lazy Susan, so I can just turn it. And I've got them all color coordinated. And there's a mix of Prisma, um, quite a few different kinds, Pablo's. Um, what else do I have in here? Uh, Faber Castell, Polychromos. So I just keep it beside me at all times because <laughs> I use a lot of color pencil and even watercolor. So now I'm going to look and you want a piece of either scratch paper or uh, I like using deli paper just to put your hand on so you don't smear it. Some people like to um, put a fixative on it at this point so they don't smear it as much. I tend to wait till after the pencil is done. Um, Holbein? Yeah, I've got Holbein. It's it's sitting in a special case. <laughs> I usually keep those for my um, portraits when I do portraits. All right. So let's start over here. So I'll see if I can get this in picture for you so you can see what do you want me to bring you guys in. Maybe that might be better so you can really see this area. How's that? Okay. All right, so I'm looking at darks. I This is the way I do things. I like starting out with a dark. So we have really, really dark darks in here. Um, so that's probably gonna be more into the cherry black or let's see what I got here. You could even go into a purple. Just checking out my colors here. Should have a real dark. 
dark. Hmm, I got some that are out of order. That's why. It's this one here. Tuscan red. That's not bad. Or black cherry. Here we go. That's my favorite. So there's a uh, black cherry. Don't know if you can see that. It's number one zero seven three. So right in here, it's very very dark. Actually, hmm, I'm just looking. I think I've added lines, more lines than what I've got in the picture. But that's okay. We'll work with it. Just lightly, lighter touch when you bring that color back out. Now this is going to take a while to do. So you're basically seeing the shadow between the petals. Yeah. And then this edge here is a little bit because the Petal is curling just a bit, so just a very light yeah, I added more I added uh, more um, petals to this. that's what I did. Oh well, we'll work with it. I find roses and um, mums to be probably one of the most confusing <laughs> because there's so many petals if you're trying to do an exact replica which is very hard to do i find it easier just to do your own thing so a little bit right on here a little lighter in touch, less, less pressure. Ah. I'm a big fan of doing your own thing. Yeah. Yeah, when you're getting references, usually you change things up in some way, I find, um, either with um, color or composition. Maybe you don't like that composition. Maybe you want to take out something that doesn't really uh, interest you in the. Maybe you want to add something. 
maybe you just like the background, but you don't like the main subject matter. That's why a lot of times you can get numerous um, different reference material and put them together. Okay, this is going to, this here is going to be lighter. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a shadow just under that because I know that's kind of curled. Okay, so I'm going to keep that out. I always keep out the pencils I'm using. And let's see, a nice pale pink. Warm, that's a good one. It's another one that's not too bad. And a white. Okay. see if this works not quite let's see if we do this light it oh let's take some out I want this lighter so I'm gonna just remove this area Then I can come back in, use my colored pencil. A little bit of a softer pink. So I just go back and forth usually in an area. So adding highlights with low lights. I need a darker, no, I need a darker pink. So you just concentrate on an area is what I do. Um, and you go back and forth with blending it in with a lighter color and a darker color. These have kind of stripes in it. A little bit of a lighter edge. A 
And then darker around the back. This takes a while. Like, I'm not going to be able to finish this, that's for sure. Um, this is going to take uh, quite a few hours, but not as long if I had to do it all with colored pencil. I just thought I'd show you. And I know there's a lot of you that love co doing coloring. Uh, so I'm right in here. This will probably have to be darker. I'm a real detail person, so it depends on how much detail you want to put in. If you're not one for a lot of detail, just more or less um, the basics, that's fine. You don't have to do all the little um, line work strokes. I like that. Actually, it's more of a warmer pink that's in here. If you have any questions, let me know. takes you sometimes yeah you just have to you know it, it's we're doing this because we like we love to do it right if you didn't like doing it you wouldn't take the time right you can just sharpen this so it's about the about the process of of um, hurting. This is very relaxing for me. It's a great um, stress reliever because it takes you out of 
all your worries or maybe you don't even realize you're you're stressing about it different things in life okay Uh, getting in the Zen zone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think we're going to need more and more of that craziness of the world. I don't even listen to the news anymore. It's so ridiculous what's going on. So keep your colors out that you're using. So I'm concentrating on the values of the different shadows. So it's just not one color. It goes from very, very dark to whatever the color of the petal is at that time. And the more layers you do, the better it looks. So how many of you enjoy coloring? Maybe you'd want to do this in your color book. I know there are some people that use it, like Dee Dee. It's a great way of practicing in a coloring book. I uh, love this. I have done it in the past. It's fun and therapeutic. It is, isn't it, Dorothy? How many of you suffer from anxiety or panic attacks? This is a great therapeutic way of uh, calming that down. Because a lot of times it, you... Um, if you become busy when you're having or about to, usually you can tell, having an anxiety attack or a panic attack, a lot of times if you can get yourself even just something very simple like doing swatches, uh, keeps your mind occupied and you get into the, the, the uh, that Zen zone like... Um, Devin said and then you forget about and it, it really calms you down you love coloring let's see I want an orange kind of a maybe this one will do it's this one Venetian red just in these orangey spots here I think it needs a little bit more Oomph. More. Yeah, that looks better. And then still we can use this.
that you use the, the pan pastels with your coloring. I, I haven't done a lot of coloring, like coloring books. I do have some. Uh, I've been pretty busy with acrylics, although you can do acrylics too in your, your books, but uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I like that. It's a great way of learning how to layer just by doing. And let's see this here. A little bit on the peachy, corally side, I think. That one. Uh, let's see. My hands get numb, but I don't let it stop me. <laughs> you must really love it, Dare. Just bring it in onto the edge here of this petal. It's probably um, dipping downwards, folding over. So it'd be a little bit darker on the edge. And then there's a little bit of a light area in here where the light would be hitting it because it's the um, highest point of that petal. And then eraser, I can erase as I go. Okay. A little darker in here. I missed that spot with the pan pastels, but I can use this uh, colored pencil.
just a few marks. And that one here, let's see. It was this one. And this is nice and dark. This is why I don't do a lot of coloring. Although I guess most people that do coloring um, videos, is there a lot of, I haven't really watched too many and I don't really remember as far as if they talk a lot or is it very quiet <laughs> or am I just that way? <laughs> Do you talk a lot? I, when I get in the zone, I go silent because I am totally thinking nothing but what I'm doing. So it takes me a lot of, uh, uh, it depends on the video. Didi is usually, yeah, Didi is, but um, as far as like, you know, your hardcore um, people that do just coloring books, like no mixed media coloring, just pencil crayons. I'm not sure how much talking they do. If they, if they do a lot of, boy, they have a talent. <laughs> I guess I can't do that. I get too in the zone. It's hard to speak. <laughs> I'm a quiet person to begin with, so it's pretty bad. Guess that's dark in there. More orange. Let's see. I need an orange. Oh, I can use this one. Yeah. Um depends on YouTube. Zuchin, zucchini kitty is very quiet color and chat with sammy was very talkative huh okay so there's a variety i guess people okay oh, dog hair
What do you guys, do you get quiet like me? Or can you multitask? <laughs> And that there. It's a little bit different. That is another white one. So let's erase that. Might change it a bit. Uh, I tend to get quiet too, do you? Hey, Barb. Yeah. You know, there's nothing wrong with being quiet. Sometimes I have music on and listen to the music, but most of the time is very quiet, no music, just very s silent. I think that was supposed to cross over. Okay, that's supposed to be white, but with a little bit of this in it. And this is white, more white. I'm gonna make this dark in here. And so I'm just mixing colors on top as I go. So I'm looking, when I'm looking at the areas, I'm looking at, there's usually three shaded colors. So use a light shade, a medium, and a real dark. And then your real highlight are bright whites. So you just kind of have to um, train your eye to find those. But you'll do it. it. Just takes a little bit of practice. A little bit of orange in there. Right there, not much. That's another light area right in here. And actually, you can get smaller erasers than this one too. There's a, um, what's it called? I think it's a Tombow mini micro eraser I think they call it they're great too I use those a lot for uh, hair I'm just going to put in some of these light areas so I don't end up uh, shading them gives me a little bit of a map to go by that one. This area in here is pretty well light. And this here. That. That.
All right. And as you go, you'll you'll find maybe you have to strengthen uh, some dark up a little bit more than what you thought. As you go, you tend to see things a little more um, intensely, I guess you could say. The darker your darks, the better it is. The contrast is what really makes your painting or drawing, uh, watercolor, whatever you're doing, pop. So there, this is more pink in here. Everybody does uh, the process of coloring differently. Some people like to just do one area at a time. Some people like to go all over with one color. So that's something that you just have to find out as you do things. You can try um, doing it by watching other people their, try their way. And then um, eventually you'll, you'll figure out what you like and don't like. There's a lot of shadows very fine shadows in here where they're tight just make sure you keep out out your colors that you're using though so you don't um, lose the colors and then you're trying to find out what they were again so keep them in a separate tray till you're done or an elastic, whatever, however you keep them. Okay, that, that, okay. This is pretty white in here. And then I think I'm going to make this dark right here. Like that. And then that can be orange. Actually, that can be dark too. Let's see, that, that. Yeah. I hope I didn't reverse it. <laughs> I'm just wondering. No. Just I must have added extra bits. Uh, 
Uh, did you draw the picture? Uh, what it is, I was telling everyone in the beginning, is I went and put in my own search words in an AI program. And then this is what came up. And then I tweaked it to the way I wanted it on uh, Photoshop. And this is what it came out to be. <laughs> so I know a lot of people are against AI, but I think it's a great tool for ideas. Um, I'm not a pro at Photoshop or um, even digi work, but it just, it's a great inspiration for you. And I really enjoyed it. So it's not somebody else's work, but it's, um, you got to watch which AI program you're, you're going in. This one is, um, only does uh, royalty free searches through royalty free um, so it's not taking uh, paintings off of the internet type of thing uh, as far as uh, people's websites and that type of thing which I don't agree on but it's fun just gives you better uh, some ideas or maybe you're a little bit uh, confused or have no idea about uh, a certain composition or maybe even just color combinations. Just you, The way you uh, put your words, terms in is, is uh, important. So if you're trying to find something that's say um, a certain color like maybe you just wanted yellow green and aqua colors then you would put that in your search terms and then you could also put um, in a style of Van Gogh or um, whoever art whatever art you uh, really like and they will it'll come out in that style now not exactly like the style but similar that's the only thing like don't expect a masterpiece because a lot of them are really messed up <laughs> i just say it um, especially if you're involving people <laughs> like there's it's got three eyes uh maybe uh four arms or the hands are usually totally messed they, they're usually um, uh, the thumbs where the baby finger is or, or has six fingers a lot of times. <laughs> but they're a great resource, I find. Because sometimes, you, especially when you get um, artist block, it's a great resource to get you thinking again. So this one was, um, oh, what did I type in? Uh, I think it was something like Valentine Flower Fantasy Roses, something like that. And then this is what came out. And I thought, awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Then I just tweaked it a bit, but yeah. I thought it was cool. Because to find a, um, a resource for um, a, a rose in the shape of a heart 
I don't think you'd find one. And I don't want to spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours drawing one. So why not get a little help? I enjoyed it. Now this one here, uh, that should be white, I think, there. So let's put the white in there. And a little bit of orange right in here. A little bit of pink. Yeah, it's cool. I'll probably get a bunch of people complaining, but I think it's cool. It's not like I'm taking somebody's whatever comes out and saying, you know, Here's the picture, not doing anything with it. Um, I don't agree with that, but I do think it's a great resource for inspiration. In here, this is fairly dark. So if any of you guys um, played with some of the programs that are out there. If you want a good laugh, they're <laughs> if you need a good laugh, there is some funny ones. Let's see, this one's got some pink in it. A bit of dark in there. Pinky color and then white. That was the dark in there. Pink in here.
Yeah, and I don't know how, like, uh, I don't know much about it, but I'm not sure. Well, I think the likelihood of you reproducing this on again is probably very slim. But I could be wrong. You never know. Darker. Because this one. Let's see. Mm -hmm. That. This one, I think, needs to be a little lighter. That's kind of a peachy pink. around the edge here. And then a brighter pink. Let's see. And then a nice deeper pink here. Now normally um, if I were doing this offline I would take my time. I'm doing it a little quicker than I would normally do it. Then a little bit of dark, dark. So what are your favorite types of coloring? Do you like doing faces? like fairies and that type of thing. Uh, what do I want? Maybe this color. So I have a bunch of fairies ready to do. What do you think will be fun? Hmm. 
I think that needs to be more on the, on the peach side of things. Let's see. It's almost yellow. Um, not that. I like doing faces and also scenes like in the Kirby. Oh, yes, Kirby's book. I guess I like doing a variety and wish there were more time in a month. Exactly. <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. Well, I think I'm going to get back into doing some more portraits. I love portraits. I love doing them. Let's see. Okay, this is where I started making things up. <laughs> and it's going to get a little bit of confusion here because I just made it up. But we'll go with it. Let's see. Um, I think that needs to be darker in there. Your portraits. Oh, thanks, Devin. I've I've um, been playing with some line drawing of uh, so you guys can. I'm gonna do actually some more, mm, I guess you could say, they're not uh, more whimsical, I guess you could say. Fairies and type, that type of thing. Mermaids too. I've got a few of those. That there. Okay, yeah, I really changed this a bit. All right. This would be shadowed. I'm going to shadow that in there a little bit. Right in here. And I like uh, faces with attitude. <laughs> they could tell a story type of thing. So I like to give them some kind of a cool expression on their face. Um.
Let's see, maybe that will be white. Let's see, or hmm, getting into the center part here where they connect. So that's why fairies are so fun. <laughs> yeah, they are fun. I, I I love doing them. I think they're they're mischievous and tell a story with them. <laughs> So they'll be fun to do. So I think what I'll do is I'll I'll sh I'll do this one side. Let's see what time it is. Yeah, this one side, and then uh, I'll probably uh, post it when it's done. But this should give you an uh, an idea of how to go about doing it. So it's basically you're you're thinking about um, the folds uh, where they're folded against each other. There's going to be a shadow in there, and the deeper it is, the darker it is that shadow. And then where they start to curl over to, then you got your highlights like this here and in here in the center. Okay, let's put some in here. It's a little bit lighter. So you just have to play. See what you can come up with. And not always will they turn out. A lot of mine, they don't turn out. But you learn. You learn with each one you do. Little tricks. That's why I, I find myself coloring. And coloring books is a great way to learn. And if you're scared about messing up your coloring book, print it off on a piece of paper so you can do it over and over again.
Ah, oh, that heart has got me, has got it, beady eye on you, better do it right. <laughs> yeah, it looks like eyes, doesn't it? Yeah, there you go, could be <laughs> a fairy in there. She's hiding in the rose, she's camouflaged. <laughs> See, there you go, you've given me an idea. F uh, flower fairies. On a monster like in Little Shop of Horror. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Sometimes, you know, it just they just come out like, you know, you drawing things and they just appear. It's so fun. There's that Get some more purple in here. The dark darks. That's turned out not bad. Let's 
see. A little bit of weight. I think this one is going to be more on the peachy side. And Going into the pink. Darker on the edge and warmer. And Yeah, I'm getting quiet. You guys sleeping? <laughs> Sharpen this. I don't know if you guys are wanting me to say every time I pick up a pencil, but that's the, I don't know how people do that. It's like they have a talent definitely for streaming. little bit of that purple. Uh, 
um, I'm doing some paperwork, so you are actually keeping me awake. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Do you like your uh, retiring? Probably, uh, if you've worked for a long period of time, you probably take a little bit getting used to. Let's put a little white in there. I think just a smidgen. You know, the one thing I like when I do uh, videos or stream is I do like to be able to look in my monitor to see what it looks like. Because you get a different um, perspective. Mm, I think I'm going to want... I don't like this all white. I think I'm going to change it. A little too stark for me. I don't mind a bit, but I think there's too much. Like I said, it's just a reference. You can change it to whatever you want. This wasn't doing it for me. Because it's so tight in the center there of a rose. Usually it's a bit darker. You can have a little bit of highlight, but Thought that was just a bit much. A little bit more of this dark purple in here. Might be darker. Um, yeah, I will enjoy it better once tax season is over. I only work part-time for the last 20 years full-time before that, so not hard getting used to it at all. Oh, awesome. I, I remember when I retired and I always felt there was something I should be doing. You know that feeling? You forgot to do something. <laughs> That's how I felt for weeks. I just couldn't get that feeling. I should be doing something. I, I forgot to do something. <laughs> it was funny. It's coming along. Maybe dark in there. Now I just have to, this is my creation as far as um, drawing it. So I have to think now how I was viewing it as far as um, how the petals were folding.
That's part of that one. I think that's going to be a little bit of highlight right in there. And then a little darker on the bottom. Okay, and then that is more orangey. Let's put highlight on the one part here. that and I think this here could be a highlight too right there okay let's see Yeah, that was one of my cre creative uh, petals. <laughs> this is highlight. And that. This little area is a highlight. And... Just a little bit more to do under there on the one side where we can connect. I think this would be probably darker than this in here. shadowed by the other petals. Better put my hand on there. We can go in and put more uh, little marks in. You don't have to put them in, but I think they look cool. And they have little um, rips like here. You can do those too. I don't have a whole lot of them in there, but I can go back in and put them in later. So let's put this last one down here. Dark. in here
So I have this folded down a little bit. This would be a little bit of a shadow along the edge. And a little bit of this color, pink. And then a lighter pink. Mm. Blend it in a little. Oh, I'm out of frame. Um, Put a little of this deep purple in, just right in the corner here, would be the darkest. Right in here, be shaded by all those petals. Okay, and this one, I'm going to put some in there too, just a bit. Now I do have this line that I don't like, but not much I can do about it. So when you're printing out your um, printable, Make sure you uh, fade it down your line to gray um, if you're able to do that. Then you don't have to worry about, I don't know what I did there. Or you could go in your Photoshop and take it out. Um, so all my downloadables are, are um, PNGs, so you should be able to change them if you want. Okay, let's do this one. It'll be the, I'm going to put some, maybe some orange in this one too, a little bit. Some white. Okay. Mm, orange. Right in here. What is this one? Um, Venetian red, it's called in uh, Faber Castell. You could make uh, the other side a completely different color too. Kind of representing male and female. That would be cool. And this one. 
What's it on here? Let's see. That it's a dark. Okay. So this is gonna be dark. kind of set back so it's darker actually I think I'll make this a little bit darker in here I think this needs to be darker. And I'll just make that light pink in here so it's not too bright. Maybe even a little bit more. Oop. See? Just put some black in there. And this in here. Dark. See, when you start doing an area and you have it really dark, you tend to have to follow that through to the other bits that are around it, or it doesn't look right. Should be dark. Uh, okay, Devin, thanks for popping in. Or use a white Posca, maybe. Yeah, yeah, you could. Definitely. I have done that before. Okay. Time is it? Yeah. Okay, just a couple more and then I'll probably have to go. Go feed my puppies. Keep forgetting to put my hand on that. So I'm kind of trying to follow the um, color of the pastel. 
that's down in that area. I can put a few uh, veins in there. So you just have to um, remember which way they're going. Um, a little bit of the purple in here. Okay, I think I'm up to, that's the dark area. Okay, so that was actually dark. So let's put put more of this color in. Just darken that area. That. And this purple. So that there. That right in here is dark. That goes right around like that. That dark. It's a real shadow. That's right here. See that there? Um, that is there. that okay all right uh it's almost 3 30 so <sighs> there's the first bit so if you've been watching this long <laughs> thank you um yeah just play with it until you get it right and do a couple of them or just experiment on both sides, maybe. That would be another way of, of uh, doing it. And then when you're confident enough, then do a full page one. But uh, yeah, the only way to uh, get better at it is to keep doing it. So I hope this helps you and you can download this on uh, either my Patreon or my YouTube membership. And it's uh, for all levels. So make sure you check that out. And uh, we'll see you again on Tuesday for Watercolor Tuesday. All right. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. And don't forget to stay creative. Bye for now. <laughs>